It's time for Two Guys and a Goalie with Dustin Nielsen, Matt Cassian, and the goalie, Joaquin Gage. Episode 22 of Two Guys and a Goalie presented to you, as always, every single episode by Odd Shark. Check it out at oddshark.com. Also sponsored by our friends at Popeye's Louisiana Chicken and Sport Clip Haircuts, where it's good to be a guy. We will play Keep It or Clip It a little bit later on in the uh, podcast today. Special guest host, we've got Hernan Salas as usual. Joaquin Gage is here. I'm Dustin Nielsen, and uh, Tom Gazzola, who was with us in our Halloween episode, yeah. Yeah. Is, is back sitting in for Cassidy. Tommy, good to see you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Nice to work with Gager, finally. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time, and it just doesn't feel right not wearing a Flint Tropics uniform <laughs> being on this podcast. You know, I'm I, sorry. I was going to text you and say, hey, just so you know, we're wearing costumes again tomorrow. I'm all in. <laughs> so I was kind of... Is it weird that I'm wearing it underneath this shirt? <laughs> just because you want to feel comfortable. You really want to yeah. feel comfortable. Thank Gager, you. how about him saying, oh, it's so nice to work with Joaquin Gage. Tasty Tom Gazzola. It's really <laughs> nice. Um, he's up the uh, female subscriptions by like six. What is it? Sixty-eight percent. Nice. <laughs> so we're up to like four now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Uh, well, I was, I was going to say, Tommy, what's it like for you being part of a podcast where you're clearly the least attractive guy on the panel? <laughs> <laughs> it's intimidating. Hernan, why are you Very laughing? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Come on, man. Wow. I mean, you work guys? with us on a reg regular well, basis. He works Come with on. Tommy, too, on a regular basis. Oh, yeah, I guess, yeah. right. So. Uh, and, but, like, look at Gager's setup today. Yeah, it's it's sharp, the first man. thing I noticed. First, he came in with a nice cap, good scarf, beautiful coat, and then he pulls out this. Beautiful. You know, also beautiful. You smell a lot better than Cass, though. Oh, thank I, you. I'm like, wow. <laughs> well, Cass is usually coming in after grinding out their heart every yeah, morning. Yeah, I guess. Right? So, I guess. Yeah. Tommy, you smell. So, Tom, what's your delicious. scent? Delicious. What's the go-to cologne? Uh, I have a bunch. Like, oh. can you just tell me name the name of one so I can also use it? Uh, oh God. <laughs> like, <laughs> wait. I I'm t I think I know what you're wearing here. What? what? You're gonna guess his cologne? I'll be surprised if you get this one. It's, uh, I think it's Armani. No, oh. no, no, no. That this, sounds fancy. Like I, my mom, my mom, God bless Eva Gazzola. She's very, she's a European lady, a little Polish. What's, lady. what's your mom sound like? Tell me, I got you a new cologne. Oh, <laughs> does she look like Ivanka Trump or uh, what's her name? <laughs> Ma Melania? Melania, Melania Trump. Melania Trump? <laughs> wow. No, thank God. Can, can we get her in here? <laughs> oh, <laughs> my, my, my parents have never bought me cologne in my entire life. Maybe my, that's my why mom, I stink. But my mom's like a little Spitfire European lady. So she, uh, I have like a Prada, Hugo Boss, uh, oh, Chanel. Nice like I have a Chanel for men, phenomenal scent. Really? Yeah, yeah. But this one is it's like a, a body works or body shop like God. mist. And I'm like, I don't usually like the body sprays. You know, yeah. I think of Axe immediately. Yeah. And, and I'm, yeah, who I'm like. Who uses Axe? <laughs> My son. <laughs> that's and, true. And that's a good, that's where I started. I started with Axe. But it's like uh, Ocean by Body Works or whatever. Oh, what? maybe that's, that's, I, yeah, I yeah. feel like I'm back in and Mexico. That's See? the smell, yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. Wow. And, and I, I love my mom, and I don't usually do the body spray thing, but yeah. out of love and respect for her, I use it. What's the, um, yeah, I don't use Axe spray anymore, mm -hmm. but what's that other company, the guy who has the funny commercials? It's red Old Spice. Old Spice. I'm, oh. on, I'm on Old Spice spray, yeah. but I don't know if it works or not. I can never, I can never tell. Ask Tammy. I don't know if it sticks or not. I yeah? like, yeah, I like the uh, first guy, and uh, what's this? What's Terry Crews? I liked his. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was really? good he was too. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Uh, quickly, we, we've got lots of hockey stuff to get to, but um, Tommy did mention that Gager was rolling in a scarf. Do you wear scarves for practical reasons, or do you do it for fashion? Well, I, no, I I do it. Practical and fashion. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, well, I, that's uh, good. It's a double whammy with me. Yeah. I, so you don't like, wear them in the summer? Uh, just no. I tried with a silk <laughs> oh. one once, just a little tie in there. European flair. Yeah, yeah. No, a lot of the Swedes did it. Is that when you were playing in Europe? No, I, oh. I couldn't pull. I wanted to. I couldn't just join the masses. I tried to do it at home, and yeah, it, I, I think I grabbed a bad scarf. I need a better, a better silk scarf for the summer. But I'd try it. Yeah, Why not? I with the bald head, it. it it kind of goes. It takes a uh, takes a little uh, takes a little away from having no hair. There, it's, it's a little more intrigue. I have to say this about the scarves in the summer, especially I, when I went to Helsinki for the World Championships uh, in 2012. I noticed the scarves in the Scandinavians, and I was like, "Wow, they all wear scarves." And then, like a couple of days in, I'm like, "They do it so well," and I yeah. was so tempted to get one. 
gauger, but I couldn't. I can't yeah. pull it off. I, you uh, have you, to have an attitude to wear. Yeah, you, you can certain, do it though. You, you can do it. Like in Europe, are you talking anytime? Anytime. Because so last year when I went to uh, Davos, yeah, and when I got well before I went, I had a phone call with my producer, and he's like, "You got to look after your throat. So when you're here, drink a lot of tea." And wear a scarf to protect your neck from the cold, like just to keep it warm. So I was like, whatever you want. Like that guy could have told me to <laughs> I, mean, I basically Do wouldn't have anything. done anything for that guy. Uh, so I went and I bought like three scarves and I took it over there and I wore a scarf every day. Then it came back all last winter. I wore a scarf. I haven't got back yeah. into it yet, but I'm heading over to Switzerland again in like two weeks. I'm going to be scarf guy again for like the next three months. That's You're a good so thing. Lucky, like Gager said, it's practical, but at the same time, it can look good. You get two birds yeah. stoned at once. Yeah, it's, it's good. That's Two right. birds stoned at once? <laughs> yeah. That's a Ricky. Also, episode. thank you very much to uh, Odd Shark for uh, the cups that we're drinking out of today. That's absolutely excellent. Uh, all right, uh, episode twenty-two. We've got uh, a number of different things to get to. Um, let's start with one of the hockey games last night, and that one was right here in Edmonton against the Ottawa Senators, where um, it's funny because you sit there and go, "Oh, you know, they, well, I sat there. Maybe I was a fool for thinking it." But I said, "Oh, they'll learn their lesson from losses to the Kings and, and the Minnesota Wild." and uh, another disappointing defeat they've had along the way. And then they go out and they, they basically shit the bed for the final 40 minutes against the Ottawa Senators. Uh, Gage, your thoughts on, 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 on a game where you think the team is going to win because they are first in the Pacific and the Senators are playing on back-to-backs and they've lost five in a row. And then, you know, they had a good first period, a couple of weak goals, and all of a sudden it's game over. It's lights out. Well, first of all, I have a bone to pick with Shaw because <laughs> I had to take my daughter to dance. And usually I can I can do it on the blue curve TV on the app, but I I wasn't in Wi Fi coverage, so I and it wouldn't allow me to watch the game on my show on my on my phone, so oh. I had to listen to the radio. Oh no! And um, I just couldn't really get. I watched some highlights later, but I couldn't get a just of how they were playing. It was just they were they were pouring it on and how poorly the game was. So, um, and of course I listened to, to friend of the show, Rob Brown's kind of critique yeah. afterwards, just so I could get maybe a, a little bit more knowledge, but nobody breaks it down better. No, yeah. he, he was well, awesome. He like, was awesome. I, I don't know. I like Matt Cassian, but maybe I'm partial on the post game <laughs> show. <laughs> well, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. I, I see where the allegiances lie. <laughs> no, well, I just said I like Rob Brown too. Yeah, no, I yeah. like him. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but I, 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 sometimes I do flick back, Tommy. Don't get <laughs> don't get your <laughs> panties in a bunch. Over there. I'm like, it's, I'm Jokes all, I'm on you. I'm not yeah. wearing any. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, you're good too. You're good yeah. too. But I was just I, I was walking the dog, and you know I got gloves on and to switch the channels i don't want to do it I so yeah. that's okay. an asshole yeah. Yeah. yeah um with that being said gager is it weird for you as a former shaw guy to have to rip shaw today no no no, no. i have no i'm i'm complete i've you used to do it when you were with him anyway sailed. yeah so. yeah no uh, that ship has, uh, right. has sailed i uh I, yeah i got my bill the other day and yeah i was, I was kind of don't pissed. even get me started on a shaw bill man oh you know what happened my daughter i told her when we went to mexico turn on turn oh, on airplane no. mode and she goes, okay. And then I looked at the bill and there was a, I was like, why is it so big? Cause I got a special deal with freedom. Cause ah, it's, and, yes. uh, and, uh, yeah. Sh- and then I l- had to go through the bill and I saw which number was, uh, Oh, that's not good. Yeah. So she was watching irresponsible crap. children, man. Yeah. They're going to be the end of you. Uh, okay. So for those of you who may be watching this, um, elsewhere outside of Edmonton, just to be clear, Tom Gazzola does host the app post game show on the radio station yeah. that I work at too. Uh, so when we mentioned listening to Rob Brown, uh, that was a slap in the face to Tommy. But uh, I, t- t- I, t- tell me, what was the reaction like then uh, after a loss of this? It must have been nasty. I saw some of it today yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. Well, Hernan's actually the producer on the post game show yeah. as well. So double whammy. I know he's crying <laughs> in the corner over there. Thanks a lot, KJ. I listened to the <laughs> pre game show, the post. I'm, well, it's right after the game, so it's on the different channels. Okay. You guys start still love you doing some broad casting during the game like well we'd love to yeah we'd love it's not allowed allowed. but when it when it comes to the reaction last night people were pissed and i think rightly so um a a lot of them said hey if cassian zach cassian and ryan nugent hopkins were playing in that game would have been a different story you know they inject a lot of life uh nugent hopkins with the skill obviously cassian has skill as well and i said hey that's a fair point that is a fair point but keep in mind that that same Oilers team that dressed yesterday sub out Caleb Jones for Joel Parrison last night beat a vastly superior Vancouver Canucks team two or three nights earlier. Dave Tippett said it after the game too, right? right. Like, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, you got to keep that in mind. So that tells you that they're fully capable of beating a Senators team 
on a back-to-back, coming in from Vancouver, losing an hour of sleep or rest or whatever, um, and that had lost the night before to that same Vancouver team. So the roster that dressed last night, fully capable of beating an Ottawa Senators team that was on a slide like it was. They showed it in the first period, and then it... To me, it comes back to what Dave Tippett said a few weeks ago after the loss in San Jose, the first uh, time the Oilers went there, and he said, hey, that's a sign of immaturity. And you brought it up earlier. Like, they're losing to Detroit, Minnesota, L.A. They get spanked by L.A. I even bring up that Chicago loss. Yeah, they were, that was the first one, wasn't it? Right, yeah. and, and to me, that's, that's a red flag. And it's, at some point, they're going to learn their lesson, obviously. You can only make the same mistake so many times until you figure it out, I think. But I, it's a concern. Like, it's a sign of immaturity. Uh, Gage, you won the equivalent of the Hart Trophy in England. <laughs> yes, so you must have been on some good teams. But, like, what, what is it? Is there, is, there, is there such a thing as playing down to the competition? Like, is that something that's hard to kick? Like, because I don't understand it. I, I, I think it's, it's a little bit like that, but it's kind of the opposite. You, uh, you know you're playing against a bottom feeder team, and you know you should win. And maybe you're trying to do too much not to... You're not trying to win, but you're almost trying not to lose, if that makes any sense. That's kind of scary, isn't it? Yeah, because you you know you're better on Like you're not playing your regular game because you're like, oh, got to get this one. But, I mean, it's it's one game... Like, every year, a team will put out just a stinker. You know, where no one can do anything. I'm surprised. It sounded like the first period was awesome on the on the radio. It was a good first period. Yeah, first period, they were really good. So, um, lots of chances and stuff like that. I'm just... Yeah, uh, that Craig Anderson, I remember he's been great here every game he's played. I remember when he was with Florida, and I think it was one of his first games in, in, the, in Rexall, and he, I think he shut out the Oilers then. He's 12-7-1 and one against the Oilers in 21 games with five shutouts. Gaze. Yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, pretty good. it's yeah. pretty good. And those, like, I know that feeling of just uh, of, of a team, you just have their number in a, in a way. I, in junior, I, I always played good against the Red Deer Rebels. Like and I just uh, I just was, because just be, I don't know what it was I, I but I always played good in Red Deer or against them and I, it was uh, it was just one of those things he definitely has that going. For Side him. question: Did the Rebels suck? No, like, no, did they, you, were, oh, okay. no they, they were good. Like, they were good. They, wow. <laughs> We won't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. They had good teams and they had bad teams. They had good, uh, what, yeah. Darren Van Imp was on that team? He's ah. a good... Where do you come out on going back to a goalie after being pulled? Like for Koskinen, would you say, hey man, get back in there on Friday? Or would you say, go this with is the, I It doesn't concern me, but it does a little bit. Here was a point for Koskinen to really um, put a foot forward and solidify him as really a number was, one. Right, like yeah. he could have... If he would have put in a really good game, um, he could have kind of put uh, Mike Smith on the dust and maybe maybe start establishing him, himself as a number one a little bit more to, to throw that stinker. That's why I'm a little bit concerned because, like I said, I think a few episodes ago, is um, it's a lot easier to, uh, to uh, not be the guy than to be the guy. And uh, he just he, he looked good when with, uh, with Talbot here when they were kind of splitting duties, but once he actually became kind of the starter, he started to falter. So um, he definitely needs someone, I think, to push him. I don't think we'll ever, uh, well, I don't know yet, but I'm hoping that he can become a number one reliable guy, but it just seems as soon as he gets those chances, he uh, he slips and falls. Can he become that guy at 30 years old, though? Well, yeah, because you've done it your whole life. There's no reason well, why. Like different leagues, you've been that guy. Yeah, that yeah, you, yeah. It's, you, you know you, he's been a starter his whole life, basically. Like, it's not nothing new to him to do, but um, the NHL is a different beast. Okay, one of the other stories that popped up um, out of Edmonton that was looked at around the league last night uh, was Ken Holland uh, chatting yeah. about Mike Babcock. Um, Tommy, you were there. I saw you creeping right next to him. Oh, man. What, got what the you, worst what, spot in the yeah, What'd you take? Oh, is that is that the worst spot? You hate that spot? I hate that next? spot. But I know some people who rush to that spot. You know? No, I, I don't like being too close like that. But, like, I have uh, the TSN 1260 mic, and then I was helping out Adam Cook with CTV. Okay, Edmonton. yeah. So I had two mics. <sighs> double and, mic. Uh, and it was a packed. It was, yeah, double mic, and it was a packed scrum, too. So I got that unfortunate position, and uh, I was on a lot of cameras. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Apparently, my uh, my uh, mannerisms and my gestures towards what he was saying were interesting enough in themselves. So. <laughs> the, the facial expressions. Yeah, the expressions. Along uh, the way. Wait, quickly, though, Gager, on the other side of the, uh, on the, other side of the scrum, do you ever have any big scrums along the way back in the day? You um, must have when you were with the oil. Yeah, I had a, I had a couple there. Yeah. They they gathered around for a bit. Mostly it was bec- they were, 
in the stall next to me, but um, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, they'd, they'd ask me questions like what happened on that one. And <laughs> just got by me. <laughs> why, why, why are they getting your bags out and putting, <laughs> getting them ready for the miners? You know? that's, that's it. One time I remember we were in Washington. Oh God, this is so embarrassing. Um, they, uh, Perfect. Uh, the, the ref, I forget his name. But anyway, he, uh, he, he went to, like, I think he went to scratch his armpit, and one of our guys fell, so I thought there was a delayed penalty. And I skated to the bench. <laughs> and it was, I got to the bench, and I, Tom Pody goes, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and, and I looked over, and Chris Simon on Washington was like, stay there! And I'm like, oh, shit. And I skated back. They didn't score, but, uh, yeah, I went to the bench, uh, prematurely <laughs> on that one and then uh i think it was titch asked me what the hell happened on that one yeah and i was like yeah i thought it was a delayed penalty <laughs> so. but i swear he tried to put his he was scratching keep his arm went up and uh i th yeah i swear but have okay. you ever skated faster in your life than going back to uh, the, uh, my heart was in my mouth yeah. right then oh god please don't score and it was like bonder on the ice and yeah. I was like, oh, shit, here we go. That's going to be but you every made highlight. I made it back. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. We you lost 4-2 that game. If you didn't make it back, it would have been on a highlight reel everywhere. Yes. I got enough Which highlights. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you are a record holder. Yeah. I remember um, when, when I, this was, I mean, completely different level, but when I was in, when I was in, um, I guess first year Pee Wee, I was playing net. We were at a tournament, and this is before I got glasses. I didn't know I needed glasses yet, <laughs> okay. so I couldn't see the other end of the ice. So I didn't know it because you know how you are when you're blind. And I thought I had heard a whistle. And whenever there was a whistle, I'd skate to the corner and then skate back to my night. So I take off to the corner. I'm not, I'm not skating very fast because I thought there was a whistle. And I get to the corner and I swear to God, because my parents were very vocal. And I hear my mom yell from the crowd, get back in the net, you fucking idiot. <laughs> and I turn around and there's a guy like at our blue line already. I was like, oh my God. Uh -huh. So I'm, I'm diving. I, do, I got back to the crease. I dove to the net and he shot it, went off my helmet top corner. Oh, no. And they oh, scored yeah, on nice. me. Yeah, they scored oh, on me. No. That was an absolute heartbreaker. No but McDonald's the, after yeah, but, And the worst thing was I got back up and like the shame of hearing your mom like yell that in front of an entire tournament crowd is just like when it's Shit. dead quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it was quiet. Get back on the net. You know who wouldn't use that type of term? Your mom, Eva Gazzola. <laughs> She'd be like, "Why did you do that to me?" Or Matt Cassian. Yeah, yeah, Matt yeah, Cass yeah, definitely yeah. wouldn't do Feel that. Yeah. Throw some f bombs in here. Yeah, I mean, it's a, Cassian's a pretty clean guy. Yeah, he's too. He's I like squeaky. the f bomb. I, I will, like, one thing I've noticed here on the podcast without Cassian, usually there's a lot of sexual innuendos, but he's not. He's not here today. And we haven't really had any yet. Not so yet. that makes me think that he's the one who kind of drives the bus on that one. I think that's in the last half of the yeah. show. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. So he gets all on. of that out on this show, yeah. but not on a post game and pre game. No, show. he's I very clean there. Yeah, yeah. yeah he is. Um, anyway, we got sidetracked. Back to Ken Hall. Yes. Uh, what'd, you, what'd you think of what he had to say? Dusty, uh, of the thousands of scrums I've been a part of, that was one of the most intriguing and fascinating ones uh, that I've been a part of. And like those facial expressions were sincere. I was dialed into that one i'm like oh man this is we're at such a interesting time in the world of hockey it's a crucial juncture i feel like and i'm curious to see how let's call it uh, the old guard if you will in this day and age is handling these situations because we all know the old school style of coaching and handling players and all of that and it's it's it kind of turning into a he said he said she said type of situation and I think that we're going to see a lot of that. But the thing that stuck out in my mind yesterday is it's good that Ken Holland was able to present his side of the story so that you weren't just hearing from Johan Franzen and Chris Chelios and that Ken Holland could give his perspective. I'm sure a lot of people are very curious to hear what Ron Francis has to say about the Bill Peters situation. And I don't think that those two GMs are going to be the last that we hear from. I think that more stuff is going to trickle out. This might be the start of something. Gager, how do you balance it and you played in the league a long time ago when things were <laughs> well, obviously well, not a long time ago. Well, kind of it a, long, a long, time long time ago. Okay. So how do you balance the fine line of, okay, back then you were maybe treated a certain way that was deemed acceptable back then, but isn't acceptable anymore. But now you want to complain about the way that you were treated back when, whether it was right or wrong. Like, how do you, how do you find that fine line? Because I mean, there's other aspects of this we can look at, but I want to start there because 
you know, if somebody wanted to tell a player a certain thing back then, it'd be like, okay, yeah, okay, coach. Like, man, yeah, that sucks. I didn't want to hear it, but okay. And nowadays it's completely different. And it seems like we're trying to use today's society and the way we are to judge what happened 10 years ago. And it's not just a different league. It's a different world. I, the only way you can really distinguish between the two, I think is seeing, I mean, with Babcock, he treated people so poorly and he, he used his abuse of power to belittle people. I th- that's what we. That's like the line. There's a difference there. That, what you're there's saying, a huge right? difference yeah. than t- telling a guy, "Look, win a face off, you stupid bomb." You yeah. know, like there's you can't get mad at that. You can't. Oh, you hurt my feelings and stuff. But the treat treatment of people has to change. You can't abuse your power. Um, and I mean. Everything's a learning experience. You don't get better at something without adapting and getting better. You know, take goaltending, for instance. You don't see that many kick saves. Well, you do see a couple pad stacks lately. But, That's I crazy. mean, it evolves. So, if um, going forward, coaches, uh, people, no matter, women, men, they all have to evolve to get better um, in their professions, whatever it may be. And you have to treat people with respect. That's... That's the only way things are going to change. That's where the line should be drawn. Um, I know going back 10 years, if a guy said something mm-hmm. bad, you know, there might be a statute of limitations <laughs> on certain things. But um, I think in the two cases of Peters and Babcock, they've, uh, they've shown that their, their actions were very, very poor and their dismissals are warranted, I think. It's going to be very interesting to see. I'm talking like Cass on this. Yeah, I was Jesus, say, that's the longest I've ever spoke on you, this thing. You, you were eloquent. Oh, you smokes. need to use a few bigger words, another. but... Uh, yeah. yeah, I'll get a penis joke in there. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. Uh, Alright, so Elliot Freeman, everybody's been saying it now that the NHL is going to work on a code of conduct to deal with things, you know, like the physical abuse and the, and the racial slurs and things along those lines. Um, Tommy, w- how difficult could it be to put together a code of conduct when, and not that I'd want to take anything lightly, but racism is one thing. Yeah. Physical abuse is another thing. And, and verbal abuse is at a different level. Like it really yeah. is. I mean, so I'm, I'm going to be interested to see how they lay this NHL code of conduct out, how, how, you know, how, how, how open it is mm-hmm. for everybody can kind of see. I also want to know if it's just going to be for the coaches or if it's going to be for the players as well. Cause I think you have to group everybody together. Don't you? I think, I think it has to be a two way street. Yeah. Everybody has to be accountable. And it, it feels like, you know, pro sports was always this kind of bubble. Like it was on a different plane. It was treated differently. And now it feels like it doesn't matter what your profession is. It's all going to be streamlined and very similar. And uh, that, that whole, well, you're a pro athlete. Things are a little bit different situations are handled differently i think that's starting to kind of fade away um yeah i guess there's kind of a code of conduct for players um and then we had a text yesterday on the pregame show saying like well what about austin matthews like mooning that girl and uh guys getting busted for doing cocaine i'm like yeah i get that that's that's unbecoming of the league but that's not in the work environment they got busted sure and they were reprimanded but now they're going to have the NHL is going to have to bring it into the, the working oh, that's environment. A good point. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Right. So um, it's changing and I think it's going to be more so similar to what the everyday person who has a nine to five is, is dealing with, you know, HR concerns, stuff like that. It just feels like it's becoming normalized in, in my opinion. This is where that, uh, who's the coach of Buffalo there? Uh, Ralph, Ralph Kruger. Kruger. Oh, the best. He's, he's going to really excel, I think, just with his experience and, and dealing with people. Like, I remember I was on a routine cable install. I met uh, Sam Gagne's wife. And uh, edit us install. <laughs> it's, yeah. wait, it's it's so Jim Carrey movie. I was on a routine. Game. Well, that's, where, that's where I get it. Yeah. Um, and uh, she a sw- sweet sweet woman. She's awesome. But um, uh, I started talking to her. It was really funny too because I didn't. I think it was her name on the on the work order. I can't remember. But um, I walked in and there was golf clubs and then some hockey sticks and and. So definitely someone who well, plays for the Oilers. Well, no, I was, I was like, I was looking around and I, and I go, what, what's up with this place? And I go, wait a second, hockey players live here. <laughs> <laughs> and so then Spidey I, re- and sense. then I saw Nuge, I think, lived there and stuff. But uh, anyway, I got sidetracked. Um, she, uh, what was I saying? 
I can't remember what you were talking about. You're talking about Ralph Kruger. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Kruger, yeah. She she mentioned how um, how much Sam loved playing for Kruger. Just said he was such a good communicator um, with the good and the bad. And and because uh, I think I asked her what what he thinks. Because I know he was playing a lot with Rennie. I think and then with Kruger, he said he was he was just great. So. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit more on the code of conduct here in a second. A few other things we want to hit on. Um, the Toronto Maple Leafs, Calgary Flames. We've got Keep It or Clip It coming up. We will get to your um, Popeye's Chicken Pull question as well. But right now, Odd Shark, uh, check them out at oddshark.com. They are a presenting sponsor of the podcast. Scott Hastings joins us from uh, Odd Shark once again. Scott, welcome back here on a Thursday. How are you doing today? Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, doing well on East Coast. I, uh, I need to know one thing. Um, I used to bet rather heavily on the National Hockey League, um, you know, like probably five to seven years ago. And back when I was betting on the league, it always seemed like the over-under was set at about five and a half. And, uh, you know, the odd time you'd get a six. Nowadays, when I hop online and I check things out, it seems like every game is six or uh, six and a half or something like that. How much of a trend have we seen on a betting perspective from an over so far over the last couple of years? Yeah, no, that's a that's a perfect analysis. You know, a few years ago, even around that 2013 lockout, even around that time, we were seeing totals of that five, five and a half. Now it's a rarity. You might see it with the Stars or teams like that, but six and a half, and we're still seeing them go over, which is pretty crazy. Uh, a few weeks ago, I think I saw a Blackhawks game at seven, and we saw that a few times last year with Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, of course, the, the wagon that they are. They, uh, they were a great over team last year, and had I told you, seven, seven and a half was not out of the question. Uh, it's, it's really bizarre, and it feels weird to bet on an over like that. But I always find when you see a big number like a seven or a seven and a half, they want you to bet the under. And I just, you know, flip a coin, throw a little on the over just for fun. Yeah, live a little. Right, risk it a yeah, little bit. Right? Why not? If they hit eight, you're going to be laughing. It's going to be great. <laughs> I remember a decade ago, you'd see the odd four and a half, which was crazy. Yeah. But you'd see it. Yeah. More clutching and grabbing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm better goaltenders back when you play. We're talking right? about Gadget. hockey, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> there <laughs> we, we go. Talking about I'm back, hockey. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty jokes, one. <laughs> nice work, Gager. Um, Scott, there's a lot of talk here about Taylor Hall right now and the New Jersey Devils and, um, you know, when and if they're going to move him. Is that so fresh right now that if I wanted to go place a bet on where he might end up, I couldn't do it? Or is that starting to pop up on books? It's, that's interesting because it sounds like the favorite for him to go to is going to be the Colorado Avalanche. And they're already the favorite to win the Central Division, uh, which is really unfortunate because, you know, that's the spot, you know, over the Blues. The Blues would be the favorite, in my opinion. They've been great, you know, defending the Stanley Cup camp. They're already leading the division, yet they're tied with Colorado with best odds at plus 225. I think that's a good spot to jump on now, uh, the Colorado Avalanche. I know it's not great value, but, um, you know, they've got injuries with uh, Landis dog and stuff like that. And, and it looks it looks like Hall is going to go there. And I guarantee if the Avalanche gets them, they're going to drop to plus 150, maybe even, even money. Yeah, that'll pick up nicely. And that'll, that'll be not bad. That's a good idea, actually. Because yeah. they might be able to make a run even if they don't get them, right? So, like, if, even if you put some money on them there, it's still not a waste. Yeah, they're only a few points back of the Blues here. I'm looking, they're six points back. But as I mentioned, they, they have several injuries. Uh, you know, they, they possibly have a Calder Cup winner here coming uh, in Kale McCarr. The kids aren't absolutely unreal. Nathan McKinnon has just t- taken off since the start of November. And like I said, no Landis Gog. Card- starting to come around, feeling that Western Conference style of hockey. And if Hall slides in there on the second line or even on that top line with Grant and McKinnon, look out. Man, it's not worth betting on Kale McCarr right now, right, for the Calder? Like, there'd be no value in that bet. Yeah, he's, he's a runaway. He's almost like a lot of Pedersen was last year. Like, just, you know, it, it's almost a foregone conclusion, even though it's before Christmas. <laughs> absolutely ridiculous how well that guy plays. He's, he's, Who's second? He's absolutely – well, it'd be Quinn, Quinn Hughes, Hughes, I would Quinn think. Hughes? Hughes. Yeah. Quinn Hughes would probably be yeah. second in that running right now, eh? That's correct. So, Kale McCarr is a minus 250, whereas Quinn Hughes is uh, plus 200. So, two to one. For him was uh, one to four for uh, Kale McCarr. And you know what? It might not be bad to put some money on Hughes because if McCarr slows down at all, I mean, Hughes should be right there with him. Yeah. yeah, something along those lines. Wait outside the WJ Marriott with the uh, 
Maybe Nancy Kerrigan, that guy. Hey? That's what that's what you're gonna do <laughs> to kill yeah. McCarthy. If I put money on Hughes, yeah. <laughs> so if you put money yes. on Hughes, you're Running. gonna attack yeah. McCarthy's leg. Did you know, was it Jeff Galuli? I need Galuli's. Anyone got Galuli's? <laughs> yeah. What a movie! Yeah. Was that? Who, yeah, that's who it was, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Good knowledge. Hey. Good. Uh, good attacking knowledge. You only it's... watched that for Margot Robbie. Admit it. No, I never watched that show. I never watched it oh, either. She's no. phenomenal. Did you watch that movie? I did. Did you see that movie? Did you see the uh, Tanya? Uh, I did, yeah. It was, it was all right. It was all right. That's, yeah. pr- that's probably the best way to describe I, it, I would think. I watched it for more. Yeah. Than yeah. I used to see Tanya Harding <laughs> every day. Why would you see Tanya Harding every day? Portland. Uh, she'd come on after practice. Really? Junior. Yeah. How what? Did you talk to her ever? Uh, no. <laughs> did you talk to her mom? <laughs> she wasn't there. The, oh, just Tanya. But she wore, she, she wore like her full skating dress all the time. All, even for practice? She, yeah, she knew what she was doing. That seems kind of weird, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, it seemed well, weird. A little weird. It was well, self-obsessive. Sp- spandex wasn't a big thing in the 90s. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, are, there, are, <laughs> oh, man. are there any trends that uh, you're looking at heading into the week? Well, actually, no, I want to ask you this. Because we saw the Senators come in here and uh, beat the Oilers last night. And uh, it was one of my lines of the day. I thought the Oilers were going to finally <laughs> oh, figure it out and yeah, get it done. But that, that backfired. Um, but for the most part, like with these teams that struggle... How is it, like is it a good strategy to just fade them all the time and just bet whoever they're playing against and try to cash in? It, it, it's interesting. The Senators are one that I've hit on a few times when I see them at like plus two hundred or more. In, the, in today's hockey, it's hard to bet on or bet against something that's valued at that at that mark. And we've seen it a few times. The Rangers against the Lightning. I think back to back games, they were around two twenty, two thirty, and I hit both of them because you know that value and it, it, it's the from the top teams to the bottom teams, there's not much that of a drop off. Uh, I know a few weeks ago, my first appearance on the show, uh, we talked about the Oilers uh, and the Kings and why you should not bet or why you should just take the Oilers in regulation. And the Kings go win four one, I believe. Yeah. So anything over plus two hundred, I almost lean towards the underdog just because of the value, and I'm seeing it over and over again of them just outright winning. Uh, anything you like this weekend? Any teams that are hot right now that you've been kind of hopping on? I've been really liking the Wild at home, and their value has been pretty good. They've been a favorite in almost every game, but they've only been like minus 120, minus 130. And they're 7-1-2, and, and the only game that they've lost in regulation was their home opener against the Penguins. So that's a really good spot for me right now. Yeah, they've been awful on the road, but they've been pretty darn good at home. So, yeah, that's a good thing to follow along on. Scott, appreciate the time, man. We'll catch up next week. Great. Looking forward to it. There you go. That's some good information from Scott Hastings from Odd Shark. Uh, you can visit them at oddshark.com. They are the presenting, presenting sponsor of the Two Guys and a Goalie podcast with myself, Dustin Nielsen, Joaquin Gage, and huge wiener Gazzola, who's with us as well. Uh, Gage, did you know that story? Have you heard me tell that story before? Nope. It's an all-timer. It's perfect for the podcast. Oh, you'll love it. This is... This is <laughs> This is probably my favorite dressing room moment of all time. So we're playing in a charity tournament for Ronald McDonald House. Awesome tournament. A great tournament. Yeah. Although shit gets pretty nasty in that tournament. Yeah, there was we got some scraps. Yeah, that like it's, yeah. it's 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 really? a two day event. Yeah, you know, there's one team, team that just uh, two years in a row. Oh, shit's running it's around. It's like my god. So anyway, after a game, we're all in the dressing room, and I have my three year old son Marshall in there with me. And uh, yeah, he was three at the time. He just turned three. And uh, Gazzola comes out of the shower <laughs> and he's standing right next to me and Marshall's helping me take off my, my tape on my, my shin pads. And, and Tommy drops his towel to put on his underwear. <laughs> and Marshall looks at Tommy and he goes, and he met Tommy earlier. Cause that was that before, after we went for lunch. Like he knew you like, yeah, we'd yeah. gone. No, yeah. no, we, yeah. yeah, we hung up. So, yeah. so he looks at Tommy and he goes, and the whole room was quiet for some reason. Well, it was loud until that very <laughs> yeah. moment. And then Marshall starts talking. And he just looks at Tommy, and I, I looked at because like, he said some similar stuff at home, but that's at home. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at I see him look at Tommy's dick, and he goes, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> and, he, and he goes, he goes, it's a little three-year-old. He goes, hey, Tommy, huge wiener. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole, Thanks, the whole room just like, <laughs> loses their mind. And Marshall, like, everybody started laughing so much that Marshall was like, what did I say? I said, don't worry, buddy. It's okay. That's like, awesome. It's all right. Yeah. So Were you giving it the full Fred Flintstone? <laughs> no. With towel no. The back? I, was, I was being quick. Yeah. I was being quick yeah. and mindful. But um, <laughs> I gave him a Saku Koivu t-shirt yes, that I had. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, from, from when you I was in high school. You brought that in last time you were with us. Yeah. yeah. And he, he's going to fit into it next year when he's six foot yeah. one. Yeah. Um, and you made him do a video and said, hey, 
Thank you for the Saku Koivu t-shirt, huge wiener gazole. <laughs> I, I couldn't stop That's laughing great. at that. <laughs> the other day, we, we always go skating at the... Uh, uh, well, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even want to give away my my, uh, my special skating place because I don't want anybody going there. So <laughs> don't even say it. But anyway, we're walking past another rink, and there's some guys skating there. And Marshall's kind of looking up over top of the, the boards, and he goes, Hey, Daddy. Huge Wiener Gazola out there? It's <laughs> just like, no, no, Huge Wiener Gazola uh, isn't out there right now. That's like, great. Yeah, it's just he like, he, he, he links hockey reviews to Huge Wiener Gazola, oh, right. so, which is classic. Like, Making the game fun. Yeah, that's yeah. important. Yeah, that's likes important. the angle of the dangle. That's all right. <laughs> uh, all right, we um, we talked about it a little bit with Scott Hastings. Let's get to our Popeye's chicken poll question. Try Popeye's legendary Louisiana chicken today. Um, Elliot Friedman had wrote in his 31, um, 31 thoughts this week week about Taylor Hall trade rumors and he had mentioned Dallas, Colorado, St. Louis and Arizona as teams that were interested. He also mentioned Edmonton but said they probably aren't going to be willing to pay the price to bring him back. Uh, so the question is and Hernan you'll get the, res- the results on this. Which team should trade for Taylor Hall? Dallas, Colorado, St. Louis or Arizona? Before we get to the results let's go. Gazola what do you think? Which of those four I, teams? I like him in Arizona. Yeah. For whatever reason, I think he would be like that explosive element to their offense that they don't necessarily have. Like even with Phil Kessel, he's kind of quietly come in there. And I know they're a scrappy team and, and Rick Tockett has them playing a certain way and, and they, they kind of outweigh you and they're patient and they're frustrating to play against. But I think he would give that uh, explosive explosiveness to the offense and, and compliment a guy like Kessel, take some of the weight off of his shoulders I really like him with the Coyotes, and, and that's scary for everyone in the Pacific Division because this guy's in his prime. I really don't see him coming to Edmonton, coming back. No, I, I know people it. want a, a wrong to be righted, if you will, and there's some out there that hope for it, but it just it doesn't make sense, in he, my opinion. Here's the weird thing for me. I don't even think it was a wrong, but I can well, understand why people might want it to be right. Yeah, exactly, and that's, that's me paraphrasing what I think yeah. is the sentiment out there, Wait, among you're some. Right. No, you're right. Among yeah. some, it is. Uh, Gager, of those four teams, which one do you think should pull the trigger? Well... <laughs> I'm going to have to agree with Tommy, but uh, for completely different reasons. Okay. Because if he goes to Arizona, because Arizona is good, mm-hmm. we, we don't want them doing well. We yeah. want the Oilers to be doing well. <laughs> so the, uh, Spoken I can't like imagine if he goes down there and plays with Kessel. Oh, the bitching they're going to do at the far <laughs> blue line because they didn't get the pass from Ekman Larson or something like that. That team is going to go right in the pooper. <laughs> With those two attitudes on there, not getting the puck, it'll be perfect. Yes, Tommy. Great idea. <laughs> Sink that team. Thanks, Gage. Sink that team. Uh, that'll be interesting. Boy, how do you really feel? Yeah, he doesn't like Taylor Hall, just in case you were wondering. Mm, I got a sense of it. Yeah. Not Her, a fan. Her Not a fan. Where are the, outside of all of the um, replies to the question, and saying, Oilers, Oilers, yeah. Oilers. Uh, what are the results looking like for these four teams? 632 votes in, wow. wow, which is a new record for this podcast. 65% is leading the way for the Colorado Avalanche. Second is Arizona at 20%, and tied for third, Dallas and St. Louis at 8%. Is that our biggest poll number yet? Yes, it is. Wow. Yeah. It Tasty Tom, just those females are just <laughs> voting like crazy. Still got it. Look, I, I'll say this. I think Arizona is the better fit than Colorado because I'm not too sure how Hall settles in as a second fiddle. But why? And, I mean, he'll be a second fiddle in Colorado. Rantanen's a better player. McKinnon's a better yeah. player. Landis Gog's a more important player. In Arizona, nothing against Clayton Keller and Derek Stepan, but Hall could go in there and be an offensive driver for them. And I think that's where he would excel the best. Why would Colorado do it when they have to... It would be a rental, wouldn't it? Or would they try to sign him long-term? Well, they I, have the money to possibly sign I, him long-term, but... but that's for that's for McKinnon, eventually, isn't it? No, that's a good point, actually. He, like, there was a Forbes article today where he's like, I would take less money to have a good team. He He's on the record saying that, but... How much yeah. is less? He's still going to be. That's what I said too, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't work. Yeah. But you didn't start at 10 mil when you uh, were negotiating. No, you, was, you got paid like shit and you were on no. all teams. <laughs> it was Canadian dollars. It wasn't Ooh. U.S. dollars. Uh, Canadian or dollars. Or pesos. Eh? I don't know. No. Okay, so there you go. That's your Popeye's chicken poll question. Check Popeye's legendary Louisiana chicken today. We had those uh, triple ghost pepper wings in studio a little while ago, and I'm sure oh, we'll, we'll I'm do something those. similar again. Yeah, they're good, right? Are they yeah. just as spicy on the way out? 
Oh, buddy. <laughs> did you, you heard the? Did you listen to that episode? I caught some of it. Oh yeah, it was it was it fire was, down below. Yeah, buddy. It was oh, it was wild and crazy. <laughs> um, the Toronto Maple Leafs have lost two. I think two in a row. Is it two in a row for the Leafs now? They lost to Philly, and then of course they lost to Colorado. Uh, they completely imploded on themselves against Philly, and then Austin Matthews said after the game that they'd quit. And I saw some people saying, should Matthews have admitted that the team quit? <laughs> um, first of all, I never really want to criticize anything a player says because I love I love it when they're open and they want to talk and things like that. Um, do you have any issue with him coming out and being like, oh, we just we just quit? No, it's good. No. Yeah. It's fine, right? Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I don't know why it was kind of becoming a story. I, I saw I, nothing worse than the, the vanilla interviews. Oh, we gave it our best shot. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't get the puck deep. Oh, power play needs some work. Yeah. Like that's yeah, that's just garbage. Like to, when a guy shows emotion, I I love it. It's and it just makes it humanizes them more. I think you know you get in, I get a good view into how they really feel instead of just. And that. if you want to say yeah, what well, felt like we quit, then say that you felt like you quit. Like, yeah, and it was the truth. I mean, they gave up a bunch of goals late in that game, so. As, as if anyone in that room is going to be like, boy, Austin, I didn't agree with what you said tonight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why did you say that to the public and the media? How oh my dare goodness. you call us quitters? You know, we were kind of trying tonight. Yeah. I yeah. wonder if uh, the bloom is off the rose with the with the coaching change now. Well, Are they going go well, to go back to... They got the little bump, right? Yeah, and then... that's usually a bump. The, the Hitchcock gave uh, gave the Oilers a little bump. Last yeah, he did, actually. Then Clefbaum got hurt and they went oh, to and with Russell, the garbage. Yeah, Russell, too. People. I guess, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see, like, what if the Leafs do go on a little bit of a slide after, after the key fire? Like, yeah, Ben Dubas is going to feel some then fire, some man. real heat. Yeah. It's on the, yeah. Because yeah, they're not, I mean, who knows? Maybe they, maybe they, maybe they find something that Keith said to somebody a long time ago and oh. fire him or something. It, that, the ring company <laughs> that they keep phoning and saying, yeah, order them. Oh, cancel the order. Order the rings. Cancel, no rings. cancel. No rings just yet. <laughs> uh, Calgary Flames have kind of just been hovering around. Um, obviously, they're going to have a new coach the rest of the way this season. Gazola, do you think the Flames should be better than they have been so far? Yes. Or is this kind of just who Calgary is this year? No, they should be a better team. But it. listen, I, di I didn't know if David Riddick was ready to take over as a number one full-time. And I, I honestly, just for the sake of Cam Talbot, um, great working relationship with him. He's uh, one of the best guys I've ever dealt with. And he's capable. He was fifth in Vesna voting in 16-17. So he's proven he's capable. I, I really thought he was going to bounce back but he hasn't, and that team, uh, it's like self-inflicted wounds on the ice, and then the whole Bill Peters thing never helped either. They're still in the mix, though, Dusty. Like, Yeah, they are. That's maybe, true. Maybe, like, maybe the goaltending shores up, and, and the players start, like, Gaudreau starts playing like Gaudreau. Did I not see Gaudreau was on a line with Lucic at practice yesterday? Yeah, so, like, they should <laughs> that be should better. help. But they're still in the mix. That'll get them going. Did you see that speed wobble that Luch did yeah. into the net? Like full, full right leg speed wobble. I it's <laughs> got it's got to the point where well I mean it wasn't that much speed, but it was a speed wobble for him. Oh right my into the gosh, net. that was. Uh. And then I saw something else pop up. I, I think they were playing Arizona. Did you see that one? And let Ekman Larson like fake the pass one way, and oh. Lucic went to step and just fell down. And Larson skated. Oh, out. I feel like oh, it's man. got to the point where I feel bad for him. Now. Like it's getting to the point where I think the trainer's literally fucking with him and messing up his skates. <laughs> like it's yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, I, I really hoped he would bounce back last season, just for the sake of everyone involved in this city for him. But he's not even on the back nine. He's not even on the 18th green. He's he's oh, he's in the clubhouse. He's, he's three deep on the 19th <laughs> hole. <laughs> much. That is what it looks like, yeah. man. It's not good. It's. I wish him better. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, but how he hasn't scored? I know. Like. I know, man. man, I always compare him in the NHL. He looks how I look when I go out and play Div One or Div Two recently. I've, I've played <laughs> against you in that, and I yes. just I just know how it is, man. Like <laughs> I, I was playing Div Two rec league like three summers ago, and I stepped out on the ice, and we had a great team. We were a bunch of older guys. We shouldn't have been playing Div Two. We had some pretty good guys. We had some junior guys who come back and play with us. <laughs> and I remember I stepped out on the ice, and the uh, the other team we were playing against had four Golden Bears defensemen. Yeah, those, and I know those guys because they play for the Bears, and I was just like, oh. So this is my final year in Div 2 in the summer. Because you just have to admit, you just have to know it's not time anymore. I'll play Div 8 for the rest of my life. It's fine. Um, but that's kind of, I, I look at him, I'm like, I know how it is, bud. Like, you just can't keep up. And that sucks. Uh, it is, the, you know, though, that is one of the reasons why you guys are excellent hockey broadcasters. Is because playing hockey at a, at a higher level gives you guys perspective on how hard it actually is. <laughs> a lot of these bums in town don't do anything and they got all these opinions, but they don't, they just watch too much. You got to get out there. 
handle a puck. See how hard it is. You know, in, in it that, gives you a little bit more more perspective. It, I mean, it, I'm in a white bread sandwich of broadcasting and excellence right here. This is <laughs> you're this just is unbelievable between two dorks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, that yeah, that too. That yeah. too. Uh, all right, uh, let's get to uh, keep it or clip it for sports clip haircuts, where it's good to be a guy, home of the MVP experience, and they are a drop off location for Santa's mm. Anonymous for six thirty. Chad, so um, if you want to uh, help out a good cause this year, go down, get your haircut, drop something off for Santa's Anonymous. What and, do we do? Uh, Presents? It's good to be a guy. What do we drop off? I can drop off whatever you want, can't yeah. you? Well, well I mean, not whatever you want. Is it food or, or is it toys? I, Santa's Anonymous? It's, yeah, it's toys. Toys? Yeah. Toys, yeah. Okay. I think I saw a bin at the mall the other day. All right. Uh, all right, here we go. Question number one. Nugent Hopkins will ma- make less than $6 million on his next contract, whether it's here or somewhere else. Keep it or clip it. I'm going to keep it. I th- this, the cap will go up. He'll, he'll remain around the same, I think. I Tommy, agree. I agree with that. I, we saw Eberly take a haircut, and that might have been an, an indicator into something. That's but true. And it's sport Hop- clips. Yeah. Good <laughs> <one>. <laughs> nice. See, excellence hey. in broadcasting. Yeah, right. Nicely really done. Good for Nicely Eberly done. to be a guy. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe him being a center and, and being able to play a two way game keeps him around that six mil. So I'll keep it. Hernan, I ran this question by you earlier this morning when I was putting together. Yes. What do you think? Keep it or clip it? it makes less than uh, makes less than he does now. I say keep it. Do, I don't right? think he gets more than six mil. And then I brought also brought up like it, let's say the Oilers struggle to get in the playoffs or whatever. Like, would he resign here? Because he's been through them rough. Because he's got man. two years left, right? This year and next year yeah. in the ZFA. Yeah. Do you think he'd want to go somewhere else and try to take a run at it? Yep. Or I mean, I guess maybe by then these guys could too. But I mean, yeah. from a winning perspective, that's got to be the number one thing on his mind next summer, right? Just a change, too. You know, yeah, he's been here a long so. time. Maybe go somewhere where it's warm for a bit. That's fine, too. But <laughs> yeah. the one thing to, to further Gager's thought there, like, yeah, he wants to win. In his exit meetings last year and his post-season uh, press conference, that's the most agitated I've ever seen him. Yes, that's seen right. Him. And I talked to him a little bit about that, and he goes, well, I, I want to win, man. Like, I was like, Nuj, I haven't seen you that angry. I've known you since you were 18 years old. He's like, I'm just fed up with losing. Yeah. Can you blame me? And I was like, no. And that's the end of it. Yeah. He wants to win. And when he's not available, the Oilers are a different team, man. True. It's just that simple. He's so mild-mannered, too, t- from being from Burnaby. Most guys I know from Burnaby are, p- like, hard asses. Really? I think Luch is from Burnaby, isn't he? I think he is. Might be. Yeah. Nooch, Nooch will get you. He get, he cracks you with the one-liners oh, from does time he? to time. He has that streak in him. It's good. <laughs> but he has to be comfortable with you, I think. I'd love to do that. I, yeah, I'd, he's great. Yeah, I'd love to get to know him. Uh, all right, number two. Cousin Eddie is the best character on Christmas Vacation. Keep it or clip it? Clip it. Uh, I love uh, Beverly D'Angelo for whatever reason. Maybe really? it's just like... Do you uh, have a crush on her? Uh, maybe that hot mom kind of MILF thing. That I'm just like, ooh, I like you, Beverly. She's not yeah. looking so great these days. Obviously, she's <laughs> a lot older. But uh, back then, especially in Vegas vacation, I was like... Yeah, Beverly, he keeping yeah. it together good. No wonder Wayne Newton wanted some of that. What did you think about European vacation when they had like the little no, sexy video? I over? was all over that. Yeah, yeah I, w- I love Beverly D'Angelo for whatever reason. I liked her in Entourage too. Her character was a hard ass. And yeah, I never watched Entourage. What? Yeah, yeah, story. yeah sorry boys, I Come didn't. On, I never what? have. Oh yeah. gosh. No, my uh, my wife, my wife got me. Uh, I watched like one or two episodes. Like I get it, Johnny Drama, Turtle, and yeah. all that yeah. stuff. Um, but my wife got me um, like. The box set when you used to buy DVDs, mm-hmm. season one. Still haven't watched it. It's still wrapped right up. Great show. Might be an idea. Do you think for I would the, like it? You the, guys know me. For the plane trip, you'd love it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna have to. I might have to dive into that. It's then. a guy's show. Like it's great. Yeah. 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 And Ari's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Great character. Gage, are you keeping or clipping it with cousin Eddie? Ooh, that's that is so hard. I'm. I think I have to keep it just because when he comes in. I'd start laughing, yeah. right? When he's standing there yeah. and and Clark just goes, Eddie, and they're looking at the lights. Oh, I, I have to pause it and start laughing just because he's... My favorite line is uh, in Vegas Vacation where Chevy Chase is like, or Clark goes, uh, Eddie, do you know that you're bad luck? And he goes, you know what, Clark? Those were my mom's dying words. <laughs> <laughs> There's just... I can't wait to watch it again and, and yeah. just to find something new that uh, oh, yeah. that happens. Uh I, I love when he just walks up in the living room in Christmas vacation and goes to hit the thing and just knocks yeah, it down. Knocks and it right just down. walks away. <laughs> like, it's too good, man. Oh, God. Uh, man, my, my, if I was answering this question and asking it, I would probably say, 
I'd probably say keep it. But my, if I was clipping it, it'd be Clark. I think Clark's just yeah, the yeah, yeah. They go one, two. But I like your Beverly. It's good I to know. I just think yeah. she's a MILF. You're, really, you're a little pervert. Eh? Yeah, absolutely. Kidding. All yeah. right, uh, here we go. David Pasternak will score 60 goals this season. Keep it or clip it? Clip it. He, he's 60's not, a lot, that's man. That's a lot. He's not scoring 60. He's got 25 already. No, I know. Uh, no, I don't think he'll do it. I'm going to keep it. I'm gonna Whoa. Keep it. I want to see him do it. I'm absolutely. The Boston's dynamic duo is not as good as McDavid Drysaddle, but it, just what they're well, doing. They're, is they're fun. different, though. Yeah. Right? Like, they're a different duo. He'll blow up for four in a game, and you're like, yeah. wow, looked like it was easy. I'll, they, I'll keep it. They pound the team a little bit more than. Yeah. They, yeah. They're. they're uh, yeah, they can do it both ways for sure. The duo. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. I wasn't going to say. You didn't <laughs> seem so sure. <laughs> I was thinking about something to say. I won't say. <laughs> uh, all right. The Winnipeg Jets are Canada's best hope for a Stanley Cup this year. Keep it or clip it? Clip it. Clip it. Yeah. Who you guys think is? Oilers have a better chance. Though. Yeah. If they can and shore up. No the way. I would say Vancouver had a better chance oh, than that, Winnipeg. The, the Jets are only two points back of the Oilers. Yeah. Like, no, if they had so. a defenseman, man, I think the Jets could take a run at it. Um. No, I don't. So, I don't do you so. do you actually think the Oilers? Are you ready to like? You think the Oilers are a cup contender? No, but I think they're better than the Jets are. They're not. The Jets aren't getting out of that division. They're not beating those yeah. teams. No, I think Vancouver is. I like what oh, I see. Look, with we've got another love in with Vancouver. Uh, it's not a Gage love in. Are you cast all you Listen, guys. Listen, like that's a that's a solid team, and the young guys are emerging as superstars. Well, we've got a really good question for you guys later so, on. You like that. Uh, don't get me wrong. If the Oilers can add a couple of middle six forwards, like really decent ones, they're going to be a good team too. And if uh, the goaltending can hold steady, yeah, that's the one that worries then they me might still. Wor- like, uh, work their way up there. Uh, all right. Eggnog is overrated. Keep it or clip it. Tis the season. Clip it. Eggnog's great. I Keep hate it. eggnog. I can't oh, stand it's eggnog. fantastic. That one, you know, the... Do you mix it, or do you just straight up, like, chug it out of the... I can. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, but the Costco Kirkland uh, pre-mixed eggnog. Oh, there's a lot of booze in that one. But uh, yeah, I like that one. It comes but, pre-mixed with alcohol? Yeah. And you can buy it at Costco? Yeah, at the liquor oh, store. Oh, at the liquor store. Okay, yeah. I thought you were like inside Costco no, taking samples it's, down. It's really good. But I, I love uh, the eggnog. Christmas time eggnog, that's that's the best, especially with a lot of booze in it. That's great. My wife Fresh, loves eggnog. I don't touch it. You get the, uh, the freshly uh, grated nutmeg on there. A couple ice cubes. Oh, listen to Mr. Fancy Pants over yeah. there. Maybe a cinnamon stick. Jeez. Tommy, you don't, this is not your thing? No. Not even with with booze? Not even with booze. I really respect what Joaquin's saying, though, and his passion for it, but (laughs) it's not for me. (laughs) (laughs) I made homemade eggnog once, like with egg, like just made it from scratch. First or last time you'll ever do that? No, well, it doesn't last that long because it's raw egg, right? right? So you got to chug it. I didn't feel too good the next day. So were you trying to do like full Rocky Balboa here and you just like put a Canadian twist on it? (laughs) As you're making your eggnog. (laughs) Uh, All right. If you were to become GM of one team, the Canucks job is more attractive than the Leafs job. Keep it or clip it. I'll defer to Tommy on this one. I'll, I'll keep it, man. That's a wild beast you're trying to tame in, in Toronto with uh, the rabid fans, the media. It, it, that's good on whoever takes that job. Dubas, whatever. Cliff Fletcher. I don't care what age you are. Uh, Gord Stellick. Like, that's Gord a tough Stelic, gig, yeah. man. That is a tough gig. And uh, I'd rather go to Vancouver. So you think the rosters are close enough then that you think you can make something work in Vancouver like yeah. with the current roster? Like yeah, that's why I think they're the best candidate at, as of right now for Canadian teams to win a Stanley Cup. I do like Pedersen a lot. He's great. Quinn Hughes is a freak. Yeah. Gager, what are you thinking? No, you go to Vancouver. Yeah? Yeah. You go to Whistler on the weekends. You got the local mountains for skiing. All the golf courses are open year-round. So you're tying in the whole lifestyle into this. It's a lifestyle decision, yeah. Oh, I got my uh, my favorite restaurant called The Nam on 4th Avenue. It's actually a vegetarian restaurant, but best Dragon Bowls going. Have you ever uh, saved anybody's life there? Um, No, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Not yet. I uh, I rubbed a, it's really like patchouli and hippie, right? So a lot of lot of love and that, I like rubbing pregnant women's bellies, I remember, and stuff like that. <laughs> Wait, wait a second, wait a second. What? So you went in this place for for dinner or lunch and you were rubbing random pregnant No, women's that's be- what I remember in there one night and totally there was like normal. tons of people in there and there every like half the women were pregnant and everyone's rubbing bellies and it was just So yeah. did you know any of them? No, no. Did you rub bellies? No, I didn't. Oh, okay, oh. okay. Well, okay. <laughs> 
Your no, own. I didn't. No, no, I didn't. okay. Double check on that one. Uh, all right. Uh, it's, exci- it's an exciting time to be a Senators fan. Keep it or clip it. <laughs> okay, I guess it was a bad question. Clip, clip that. But Where, I mean, they got Shabbat. They've got Kachuk. You you hope that things are going to get better before they get worse. In a perfect world, they draft one of these high end forwards that's available this year. Was well, what's Pajot got left? He's, he's almost done. He's, he's going to be gone. He's gone. Yeah. So, oh. all right then. What's uh, sorry, Sens fans? I was trying to get some. How old is Anderson but, too? He's got to be. Late, late he's 30s. in the back now. Oh, yeah, he's, right? yeah, he's got to be close. So to they're going to be looking for a goalie. Yeah, that's not a good – that's not good at all there. All right, here's the last one. This is a debatable point. It's okay to kiss randoms if it's under a mistletoe during the holidays. Keep it or clip it. Clip it. That's weird. But it's under the mistletoe, right? Yeah, no, I, that's just an excuse. The mistletoe, I feel, is just – But that's excuse. exactly what the mistletoe is put up for. but not – you should be walking around with a mistletoe attached to a hat on top then of your head. Then people will be like, wow, you really are a creepy perf, Tom. <laughs> yeah. We had a hint that maybe you were, and their senses are completely right if you're doing that. Gage, what about you? You go to a house party, and there's like some chick there who's just kissing everybody under the mistletoe. But she's are your you, buddy's you, wife. Are you getting in on that? Or are you just being like, that doesn't make any sense? Is my wife there? <laughs> uh, your wife is there. Okay. But she also understands the situation. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's okay. It's fine. No tongue. Yeah. I was going to say, you're not mistletoe <laughs> French in here, right? No. Like, yeah. It's fine. Yeah. It's uh, it's the holidays. Everyone kind of gets it later on the night. Depends how much eggnog I've had. <laughs> um, as long as I'm not wearing my, uh, mistletoe belt buckle, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that's a good one. I love that. So I just want to say this, Dusty, <laughs> I have your phone. Yeah. And your a message popped up, and all I saw was Wiener Gazola. So, but I, I'm not prying. I don't look at your messages. No, 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 no. But this one's from your oh, wife. Oh, no. It says we turned on your podcast, oh, no. and Marshall. Oh, and it went away. But yeah, I, the, I got it. It's on my. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So my wife texts me because I usually watch this when they're having lunch. <laughs> she goes, "We turn on your podcast," and Marshall goes, "Hey." Is that Big Wiener Gazola? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. What's up, Marshall? Uh, Hi, Tammy. Uh, <laughs> that is hilarious, man. Oh, hey, God. Tommy, when you go over to Dusty's place, do you find it, uh, it does it? Is there a lot of eye contact, or is it, <laughs> or is it there no eye contact with Tammy? No, no, no? everyone's cool. Okay. Everyone's cool. Uh, <laughs> all right. is, you know what? That is classic. I, After I, telling that story, to have him turn up, whoa, yeah. <laughs> Big Wiener Gazola is on Daddy's podcast. I don't think you realize how many people listened and watched this thing. You're not going to have <laughs> any hot contact is that the, the holidays. Is that the front runner for the name of the Dude, podcast? It's 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 one of two things. It's either. Huge wiener gazola. No, never mind. It's huge wiener gazola. Yeah. 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 That'll oh make goodness. people want to listen. Your mom will love that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, that is, great. what does your mom say about my kid calling you huge wiener gazola? Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> the, that's that's funny. Why did that happen? Why was he in the room? Well, mom, long story. Uh, I want to know. But that's funny. You know, kids are funny. Uh, why no. don't you have kids and why aren't you married to me? <laughs> hey, hey, you're, you're just starting to let us on an inside look here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, Tommy, get it together. Yeah, I'm figuring uh, it out. All right, that's going to do it for uh, <laughs> episode 22, Huge Wiener Gazola. <laughs> Download it today. Oh, God. How's that for a Google search? <laughs> uh, for Hernan Salas and Old Huge Wiener and Joaquin Gage, I'm Dustin Nielsen. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Odd Shark. Check them out at oddshark.com. And of course, Popeye's legendary Louisiana chicken and sport clip haircuts where it's good to be a guy. We'll be back on Monday with episode 23.